Okay, so we're getting pretty close to the end. You can see a lot of these different entities are now blue. And in this lecture, we're now going to work on the person create component. And again, we're just going to uh, upgrade that or migrate that from AngularJS to Angular. Now, an important thing to realize about this is that if you look in the uh, controller for this component, you can see we're using the state, the UI router state service, and we're actually still going to be using it when we're uh, saving a contact. So when we save, we use the UI router to then navigate to the list state. So essentially when dealing with this component, it's the first time throughout our migration process, we're really going to have to start dealing with UI router. And I'll show you what we're going to do when we get to it, but essentially, eventually, we're not going to be using UI router in Angular 5, in modern Angular. In modern Angular, we're going to be using the built-in routing framework. Okay, so the built-in routing framework in Angular is perfectly good, it's, it's an excellent uh, router, and we're going, we're going to migrate onto that. So essentially, we're gonna get rid of UI router anyway. So UI router we're gonna be dealing with by temporarily upgrading it. But again, I'll show you all of that in this lecture. So let's get started with this. We should all be pretty old hands at this right now. Let me get some space on the left hand side. So I create a component, the person create component. Let me rename it properly. And then I convert this to a decorator. doesn't have any bindings and nothing very complicated to deal with. Okay, and for now, I'm just going to ignore the state completely uh, for a second. Uh, we'll deal with that shortly. We don't even need this. And as you know, we're just going to be injecting stuff in manually. So I'm just going to paste in this inject code, which we've seen like maybe dozens of times so far now. So I won't need this. And I won't need this. Yeah, we're looking good. Let me start importing a few of these things in. So let me import the core. Let me import contact service. And then let's get that in the right space. And then let me import the component. That looks good. Again, the state is underlined with red because we haven't got one yet. We will be dealing with that shortly. But uh, for now, let's just get on with the rest of it. So we've created a component. What do we need to do next? Well, we need to go into our ng module and then we need to just add that to both our declarations and entry components. And let's include that. Get rid of it from here. Okay. Okay, so I think that's the main part of it done there. Let's go back into our person create component. Now, if you look above in the template code, we're gonna to have to update the template code now. But the one thing I want to bring your attention to is this ng include. So in AngularJS, we were capable of including uh, different snippets of HTML within uh, our template. So we could use this ng include directive, which would then literally pull in that form HTML into this template. Now we can't do this in Angular. There's no equivalent in Angular. So now there's a couple of ways of dealing with this. One of them might be to create you know, a completely separate component that just deals with the form and putting it in there. And that's perfectly fine if that's what you want to do. But it, for us and for our use case, because this form is only going to be used in two places, in this person create and the person edit, because essentially they're the same form, just with edit, you edit a person, with create, you create a person. So essentially the same thing. So what I've decided to do is in, I've created one template file, which I'm gonna share between the create and edit. And I'm gonna use a property called mode, which will then you know, flip out some behaviors in the template to make it work for create or to make it work for edit. So it's essentially it's gonna be the same template overall. So just have a look at this template so you see what's going on. It's got a form control on a submit we call the save function. We then got a create button and then we include the form HTML itself. So you go to the bottom, this is a form HTML itself and you can see it's a bunch of different fields, name, email, photo, uh, sex, birthday, phone 
address city, and each of them has an ng model. And this is the old Angular JS style. Now I'm not going to have you watch me implement all of this line by line. I'm just going to copy and paste a whole new file in. But you can see it's a fairly straightforward file that we're going to be creating. So it's going to be called person, and I'm just going to call it form.html. And I'm just going to copy and paste it from somewhere else. And it is just a standard Angular template driven form this time. Before, the last time we dealt with a form in this course, it was a model driven form. This is now a template driven form. So we've got features like ng submit, and we've got features like uh, ng model. So again, if you don't understand what template driven forms are, then please go to my website codecraft.tv and check out my free course on Angular where I cover all of this. And again, there's not much point learning how to migrate from AngularJS to Angular if you don't already know Angular. So please take that course, it's 100% free. And you can see here, we've got a special property called mode, and I'm going to display the value here. And then in different parts of the application, so if the mode is equal to edit, then I will show a delete button, which makes sense. If you're creating a new person from scratch, there's, there's no need for a delete button. And that's pretty much the only space I think I'm using the mode actually. Yep, that's pretty much it. So that's the only difference between this template between create and edit. And that's why I just created one template to share between both of them. So to use this template in our person create, we need to, well, let's just get rid of all of this. So you don't need to do an inline template anymore. In fact, we need to provide a template URL. And it's going to be something like this. So person form .html. Let's put that on the new line. So person form HTML, person form HTML. Yep, that looks pretty much right to me. Okay, next thing to do, I think is to downgrade our component. And again, I'm just going to copy and paste this code in because we've done this so many times already now. Let me create some space on the left hand side. Let's import the static module. And again, this person create, we're downgrading the person create component. And it has no input, so it's a pretty easy one here. And again, let's make sure things are in the order I like them. Okay, now we're looking in a pretty good place. And the last thing we need to deal with is this pesky little state UI router service, which lets us just do navigation with the UI router. Now, as I said earlier on, the way we're going to deal with this in this step, in this lecture, I should say, is to temporarily upgrade a UI router, the UI router state service, so we can start using it in our Angular application. Now we've done this previously with the AG, where's it gone? With the AGS upgraded providers, and we did it previously with a toaster service. So we need, we now need to do this with the UI router state service. So I'm just gonna paste in the code, and as I said before, this code is so copy pasteable. You're just going to do the same thing again and again and again. Actually, let me format the document so it's all yeah. Then the same thing again and again and again. So we've got the injection token, which is UI router state, and then we've got the provider here, and it's going to essentially return the dollar sign state from our Angular JS injector, which is here. Next thing we need to do is means to make sure that we are providing this in our Angular application. So we need to go into our main.ts. And just the same way as we did the toaster service provider, and now we need to make sure we're including that properly. And it's gonna, I think it's gonna add it to the, yep, so it's brought them both in from AJS updated providers. And the last thing we need to do is then inject this new version of the state provider into our person create component here. So I'm gonna add it in at the end just like this. And I'm going to inject UI router state, which remember that's the that's the token that is from the AJS updated updated providers. And that's going to return us our state. Let me double check if that's bringing it in correctly. Ah, yeah, let's make sure we're bringing it in from the right paths. There we go. Okay, excellent. I think let me double check over it. Yep, it looks pretty good to me. I think we're good to go. Let's try this out. Clear this, npm run build. Excellent. So now let me go into our application, close this out here, and hit refresh. So our application looks like it's working. Yep, it's working. 
but the, the thing that we changed was the create component. So let's click that and make sure it's still working. And yep, we've got a form displayed as before. So let's give it a name, let's give it a date, uh, 2018. Uh, I don't think anything else is required. So let me hit save. And here we go. So that's it, it's now working. Asm2 is created. We can delete it. And yeah, everything looks pretty good. So in this lecture, we migrated across our person create component. And in doing so, we started using things like template URLs and we shared a template that we're gonna eventually use in a person edit component. And the important thing to, to, to realize that we've done here, because this is all pretty standard stuff right now, we've done this so many times before, is that how to deal with the UI router. So we now, because we're gonna be dropping UI router in the future, I think the best way to deal with it is just to temporarily upgrade it so we can use it in our application because you know, there's no point doing anything more complicated because eventually we're just gonna drop it later on. So we basically dealt with this by using the upgrade approach, the upgrade injectable approach that you saw previously.